students today we are going to revise the chapter gravitation because there was a gap of almost a week in between so i thought of revising this chapter so let us revise the chapter what topics we had covered so far and uh, what were the important topics that we will discuss little in detail okay so let us start so until now we had discussed introductory section of the chapter then the topic gravitation then how did newton gauge the inverse square law then we also discussed about kepler's law and after in the after session we had discussed about uh, importance of newton's law of gravitation and free fall so these are the topics that we have discussed so far now one by one we will discuss important topics in detail so the first important topic as per my point of view was universal law of gravitation so what does this law state this law states that every object in the universe attracts every other object with a force which is proportional to product of their masses and inversely proportional to square of the distance between them let us quickly analyze this definition so every object so every object means every object which has a mass that is a condition so this every object with a mass attracts every other object which has a mass with a force which is proportional to product of their masses so if this object called a has a mass capital m and this small object which has a mass small m then the force is directly proportional to product of this masses and inversely proportional to square of the distance between them so if d is the distance between the two objects then it will be inversely proportional to d square the force is along the line joining the centers of the two objects okay so force is along the line joining the centers of the two objects and what is the formula for it formula f the gravitational force f is equal to g capital g which is universal gravitation constant into capital m into small m divided by d square so this is a formula for gravitational force so this was universal law of gravitation now let us see kepler's law now these are the three laws first one is the orbit of planet is an ellipse with sun at one of the foci second law is the line joining the planet and the sun sweeps equal area and equal interval of time then third law was the cube of the mean distance of a planet from the sun is proportional to square of its orbital period capital t and following is the relation r cube upon t square is constant so these were the three laws of the uh, kepler these were proposed by kepler based on the observations uh, which were noted by tycho brahe well uh, so first is orbit of the planet is an ellipse with sun at one of the foci so planets always though many times in pictures you might see planets revolving in circular orbit but every planet revolves in elliptical orbit okay which has two foci and sun is at one of the foci uh, then line joining the planets so line which joins planet and uh, sun or the star in between it sweeps equal area and equal interval of time the third is the cube of the mean distance of the planet from the sun is proportional to square of the orbital period so r cube upon t square is constant so these were the three laws proposed by kepler then comes the importance of newton's law of gravitation so what is the importance of newton's law of gravitation the first is universal law of gravitation successfully explained several phenomena which were believed to be unconnected like the force that bind us to the earth motion of the moon around earth motion of the planets around sun 
and the tides due to moon and the sun all of this phenomena happen because of gravitation so that was importance of newton's law of gravitation so this phenomena which earlier seemed to be unconnected because of universal law of gravitation which was proposed by newton we came to know that all these phenomena are connected to each other so let us move on to the next topic free fall which also we had done in the earlier session the first point is we have learned that earth attracts object towards it so every object that you throw in upward direction it is bound to come back because earth attracts it and the reason is obviously gravitational force so this is an image where a boy is throwing a ball upward direction so obviously it will uh, fall in downward direction later on so this is due to gravitational force we should always keep in mind that whenever object fall towards earth under this force alone we say that objects are in free fall so any object which falls under the influence of gravitational force is called as free fall let us move on to the next topic the topic's name was to calculate the value of g so how do we calculate small g which is acceleration due to gravity we all know that on earth acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second square but how do we come up with this value that we are going to see in this topic so to calculate the value of g we should first put the values of capital g capital m and capital r in the equation small g is equal to capital g into capital m divided by r square now once you put the values of capital g which is 6.7 10 to minus 11 newton meter square per kg square then mass of the earth 6 into 10 to 24 kg and radius of the earth 6.4 into 10 to 6 meters so once you put these values in this equation we get 6.7 10 to minus 11 multiplied by 6 into 10 to 24 divided by 6.4 into 10 to 6 meters so what we have to do 6.7 multiplied by 6 divided by 6.4 so you have to divide it and uh, you have to deal with this uh, order of magnitudes 10 raised to minus 11 10 raised to 24 and 10 raised to 6 separately then you get the answer 9.8 meters per second square thus the value of acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second square now motion of the objects under the influence of gravitational force let us do an activity to check what happens if we change the shape size mass of an object if it falls from a height and then for that we have to take a sheet of paper and a stone then drop them simultaneously from the first floor of the building what you will observe is what we have to observe is whether both of them reach the ground simultaneously we see that paper reaches the ground little later than the stone. This happens because of air resistance. The, uh, the air offers resistance due to friction to the motion of falling objects. The resistance offered by air to the paper is more than the resistance offered to the stone. And why? Because paper is made out of some material which is little porous in between and also the shape of the paper. It is very flat, so obviously the air offers more resistance onto paper. But if we do the experiment, the same experiment in glass jar, which air has been sucked out, if we completely evacuate the glass jar, what you will observe is paper and stone both fall at the same rate. So from this we can conclude that gravitational force and uh, acceleration due to gravity small g is same on both the objects so both of them will fall at the same instant provided you remove air from it because air offers more resistance on some kind of materials so we know that an object experiences acceleration during free fall and uh, from the equation small g is equal to capital g m upon r square this acceleration experienced by the object is independent of its mass so 
mass of the object really doesn't matter in the value of small g so whatever may be the mass of the object the small g will not change for that object and this means that all objects hollow or solid big or small should fall at the same rate as g is constant near the earth all the equations for uniformly accelerated motion of objects become valid with acceleration a replaced by g so all the three kinematic equations which is v is equal to u plus at then s is equal to ut plus half at square and v square is equal to u square plus 2s all these equations the form remains same only that we have to replace small a with small g so this is how we get three kinematic equations for a free falling objects so v is equal to u plus gt s is equal to ut plus half gt square and v square is equal to u square plus 2g so this is a modified version of kinematic equation for a object falling under the influence of gravitational force so that was all for today i hope you understood the topic and uh, today's assignment is you have to write an article on how kepler came up with the three laws that we discussed in today's session okay so you have to find out how kepler came up with this laws so there might be some history some story behind it and you have to find it either by referring the textbooks or by referring some another reference books or the best way is to use internet and try to search for it okay so uh that was today's assignment if you have any doubt feel free to ask you can put your comments in comment box see you in next session until then take care bye bye